Welcome! This series is designed as an introduction to statistics. It's designed specifically for psychology students and especially those who oftentimes aren't interested in statistics, math, and numbers. Um, and so hopefully through this series, you'll actually find it at least a little bit interesting or at least tolerable. To keep things digestible, I've broken things into bite-sized chunks that'll range anywhere from about 10 to 20 minutes, although some will be a bit shorter and some will be a bit longer. Before we get going, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Tucson, Arizona, uh, the Southwest Desert in the US, and I got my undergraduate degree in psychology with minors in Spanish and communications. I went on to grad school at the University of California in Riverside and got my PhD in social and personality psychology with a focus on health psychology. I had the opportunity to learn a lot of quantitative methods and statistics during that time, and so I get to share some of that with you. I then went on to the University of Pennsylvania, where I spent four years as a postdoc studying positive psychology and all sorts of other interesting research questions. And I'm now a, series, a senior lecturer at the University of Melbourne in Australia. Throughout this series, I'll bring in some of my own stories to try to make things more alive and more interesting to you. Um, this is a picture of me running the Carlsbad Marathon in California. I'm now more of a cyclist and a runner, but for a while I was really into running and I've done nine different marathons. This quote here, I think, really is a nice analogy for learning. Learning to statistics is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It takes a lot of work and effort. At times, you just want to quit, but if you hang in there and keep shuffling along, you'll make it to the finish line. And then it's all worth it, a profound sense of accomplishment. And I think that really captures statistics very well. It can be challenging at times, you want to quit, but hang in there with me, trust the process, and we'll learn a lot along the way. So diving right in, what is statistics? Um, it's a field of study, just like psychology is a field of studies. Uh, stats, it's a very active field. Um, it makes use of math, but I say it's not math itself. Uh, when I first started within this, I didn't really like math that much, but I really see it as a tool and a use of things. Um, so hopefully you, you, you can take that as well. It's all about gaining insight from data. So we have some data there, and then we use statistics in order to learn about it and come to informed decisions about our research questions. And I like to think of it as an active investigation. We're very much a part of it as an analyst, and uh, as we try to make sense of the data that's there, using different tools that we have at our disposal. And we'll talk about some of those tools throughout this series. Now, before we go too far, I'd like to start with a bit of historical background. I think it's always good to know where things came from before we go where we know where it goes. Basic statistics have been used in some form really throughout history uh, for thousands and thousands of years. Um, back in the day, uh, empires would do census and record trade and commodities and things like that. Um, and so we saw very early use of stats through counting and through uh, um, trying to make sense of what was there. The Roman Empire was one of the first to extensively do this. And they gathered a lot of data on things like population, geographic area, wealth. They wanted to show that they were the ruling empire, and they did that quite well. Um, and now, uh, one of the early uses of, of statistics uh, seen by this, this picture in the middle is uh, that the, the, the Athenians would actually use statistics as part of their battle strategy. So they would have soldiers count the number of bricks that were near them. And then they would kind of say, okay, how many did, did each soldier get? And they'd essentially be taking the average of those or the most often number. And then they would use that to try to estimate how tall the wall was so that it would have a ladder long enough to actually get, get up to the top of it. So it's interesting that things like the mode and the mean, which will come to, to uh, next time very much parallel this. Now, across the first millennia or two, um, think statistics were really used to make descriptions about a state or a community. 
For example, this is Sir William Petty, a 17th century economist who used early st statistical methods to analyze demographic data. And then as we reached the 19th century, things started to broaden out and, and it became used to collect, summarize, and analyze data bordering much, so it's much more similar to the way that we use it today, which really includes everything from collecting data to making sense of it, summarizing it, and then presenting it. And so as it shifted over time, it started to take on more uses, more applications, and today it's a very active and dynamic field. Now, although the origins uh, began in probability, the modern field of statistics really started to emerge in the 19th and 20th century. The first wave at the turn of the century was, was led by people like Sir Francis Galton and Carl Pearson, pictured here on the left, and they really started taking stats from a method of just counting and really using it um, to apply it to industry and politics and really transform it into a rig rigorous mathematical sense of things. Um, the second wave in the 1910s, 1920s was initiated by people like William Gossett and people like Sir Ronald Fisher, pictured here on the right. Um, and this involved development of better experimental models, hypothesis testing, and techniques for small data samples, which we'll come back to uh, in the weeks ahead. And the final wave uh, emerged with the work of people like Pearson, uh, Neiman, and others, uh, all, of it, all of whom have statistics named after them. And uh, we'll look at some of those in weeks ahead. Now, when I first started in statistics, I thought the things that I learned, OK, this is just how it is, and I have to learn these formulas, and that's all there is. But what I've discovered over time is that it's a very dynamic field. Even today, there's debates about things like, should we even be using p-values in hypothesis testing? We'll come back to that in a few weeks. Um, and there's all sorts of uses today in trying to make accurate inferences from a set of, of, of data. Um, and there's, there's a lot of fun stuff that we can do with it. Uh, this picture here, uh, this graph is from my dissertation. I looked at physical activity across a 25 year period. The black line shows average trajectories, which we see declined over time. But all of those individual lines are different individuals. So some were increasing, some were decreasing, some were, were jumping all over the place. And these actually related to other things like how long you lived and how healthy you were. So there, and, and we could do this by taking the numbers and making sense of them through various, various statistical techniques. Now, you're probably sitting there wondering why you're here, or about to embark listening to a series of stat videos. Um, a simple answer to that is that to answer interesting questions, we need data. Um, and so I want you to learn about the numbers and these different techniques because we can use it to test and create our theories. And even if you never actually collect and analyze data, even if you're just learning it for the sake of this class, it's very helpful to understand some of this so that you can be a critical consumer of what you read. There's a, a statistics can be used uh, to tell all sorts of stories. Some of them are true and some of them are not. And so you want to be critical of what you read. And so through this, you'll get the skills to actually be able to read articles that you come across. Um, and so I will be giving you those different skills over the weeks ahead. So this is the series that we have for you. Um, it'll consist of a series of about 40 mini videos, again, broken into little chunks. The first section will focus on descriptive statistics. This is describing what we see, and it summarizes data. We can use it through numbers. We can do it visually, really just saying, this is what I have and making sense of it. The second section will focus on inferential statistics. In this, I'm taking data from a sample and I'm trying to say something about a larger population. 
And so we're coming to conclusions based on a smaller set of data. And this is really a core use of stats um, that you'll read about and that you'll use. Bottom line of all of this, I see the different tools that are out there as sort of my toolbox. Um, and depending on my research question, I'm going to use different tools, different techniques. Uh, in order to know which tool you should use, you need to know what's there, what's available to you, and I'll give you those skills in order to know what's the right tool in the right case as we go through the weeks ahead. Throughout the series, I'll bring in real life examples from research as I believe that can really give a lot more life to an otherwise dry topic. Who knows, by the end, you might even find that you like statistics, um, or at least that it's not so bad, or you might decide it's not your, your cup of tea. That's okay, at least give it a go and we'll see where this journey takes us. Thank you.